Hello students, welcome to the another episode of your online lecture. It is part of your paper, Research Methodology, Code EED 602. In this PPT, I will discuss with you plagiarism and academic dishonesty. And after this presentation, I will open the chat room of your class for discussion, which will be both audio and video. So basically, the question arises that you may have read or heard about cases in which a politician, a journalist or another public figure was accused of plagiarism. No doubt, we have also had classroom conversation about plagiarism and academic dishonesty. It almost certainly has disciplinary procedures mean to address cases of plagiarism. But you may nonetheless find yourself with questions that what exactly is plagiarism. So this presentation is going to discuss these questions. What is plagiarism? What makes it a serious offense? What does it look like? And how can scrupulous or meticulous research and documentation practice help you avoid it? So what is plagiarism? Merriam-Webster's College Dictionary defines plagiarizing as committing literary theft. Plagiarism is presenting another person's ideas, information, expressions or entire work as one's own. It is thus a kind of fraud, deceiving others to gain something of value. While plagiarism only sometimes has legal repercussions, example, when it involves copyright infringement violating an author's exclusive legal right to publication. It is always a serious moral and ethical offense. So what makes plagiarism a serious offense? The change of plagiarism is a serious is serious because it calls into question everything about the writer's work. If this piece of writing is misinterpreted as being original, how can a reader trust any work by the writer? One instance of plagiarism can cast a shadow across an entire career. Schools, universities consider plagiarism a grave matter for the same reason. If a student fails to give credit for the work of others in one project, how can a teacher trust any of the student's work? So plagiarism undermines the relationship between teacher and students, turning teachers into detectors instead of mentors, fostering suspicion instead of trust and making it difficult for learning to take place. Students who plagiarize deprive themselves of the knowledge they would have gained if they had done their own writing. Plagiarism also can undermine public trust in educational institutions if students are routinely allowed to pass courses and receive diplomas without doing the required work. What does plagiarism look like? Plagiarism can take a number of forms including buying papers from a service on the internet, reusing work done by another student and copying texts from published sources without giving credit to those who produce the sources. All forms of plagiarism have in common the misrepresentation of work not done by the writer as the writer's own. And yes, that includes work you pay for while celebrities may put their names on works by ghostwriters, students may not. Even borrowing just a few words from an author without clearly indicating that you did so constitute plagiarism. Moreover, you can plagiarize unintentionally in hastily taken notes. It is easy to mistake a phrase copied from a source as your original thought and then to use it without crediting the source. Plagiarizing yourself? Is it possible to plagiarize yourself? Yes, it is. If you use ideas or phrases that you used in prior work and do not cite the prior work, you have plagiarized yourself. Many academic honesty policies prohibit the use of one's prior work even with a citation. If you want to reuse your work, consult with your instructor. So these are a few examples. Imagine for example that you read the following passage in the course of your research from Michael Agar's book, Language Shock. So the paraphrase here, everyone uses the word language and everybody these days talk about culture. Language culture is a reminder, I hope, of the necessary connection between its two parts. Here we see 
that this lingua culture is in quotes. So this C, what exactly it means? If you wrote the following sentence, it would constitute plagiarism. Why? Just see the paraphrase again. At the intersection of language and culture lies a concept that we might call quote, lingua culture, unquote. This sentence borrows a word from Agar's work without giving credit for it. Placing the term in quotation mark is insufficient. If you, see, if you use the term, you must give credit to its source. <clears throat> now, we repeat the paraphrase. At the intersection of language and culture lies a concept that Michael Agar has called, quote, lingua culture, unquote. Then, in parenthesis, we have given the page number. In this version, a reference to the original author and a parenthetical citation indicate the source of the term a corresponding entry in your list of works cited will give you give your reader full information about the source. Now another example. McDougall's Promised Land Crusader State, the American encounter with the world since 1776. American exceptionalism as our founders conceived it was defined by what America was at home. Foreign policy existed to defend not defined, not define what America was. If you write the following sentence, you have plagiarized, even though you change some of the wordings. Now see here, for the founding fathers, America's exceptionalism was based on the country's domestic identity, which foreign policy did not shape but merely guarded. In this sentence, you have borrowed an author's idea without acknowledgement and remember i repeat again it is idea that you have borrowed now you may use the ideas however if you properly give credit to your source as walter mcdougall argues for the founding fathers america's exceptionalism was based on the country's domestic identity which foreign policy did not shape but merely guarded you have cited in parenthesis, the source. In this revised sentence, which includes an in-text citation and clearly gives credit to McDougall as the source of the idea, there is no plagiarism because you have given the source here. Now, how can you avoid plagiarism? Avoiding plagiarism begins with being scrupulous in your research and note-taking. Keep a complete and thorough list of all the sources that you discover during your research and wish to use. Linking each source to the information you glean from it so that you can double check that your work acknowledges it. Take care in your note to distinguish between what is not yours and what is yours. Identifying ideas and phrases copied from the sources you consult. Summarize your sources and your own original ideas. And hence, with this, we end this presentation and a detailed discussion of plagiarism and citation you'll find in MLA 8th edition, which I have used for making this PPT. Thank you.